if, I don't know if y'all know, but this young man played my son in the movie Monster. There we go, right here. <laughs> it doesn't feel like that much time has passed. I know, I know. It was so quick. It was just like, boom. Like, I, I, first of all, you way too young to be playing my mom. That's oh, what I feel like. I'll <laughs> take it, but no. I was like, she's so beautiful. Oh, oh. <laughs> wow. It, it, it's like seeing you grow and grow and grow because you still feel attached, like it's your kid or something growing up. So I'm in awe of just to see your work in this new project and film that you're doing and just everything you've gotten to do. I want to say congratulations, and I am proud of you. Thank okay? You so I appreciate it. Now, tell me about your family. You grew up in a, a musical household? Yes, yes. So my dad's a, a saxophonist. He plays jazz music. Mm -hmm. um, and my mom was a singer. She still, she still sings, you know? Um, and so uh, we all had to learn an instrument. So mm -hmm. my first instrument was violin. I played when I was seven. Um, and then after that... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then um, after Hurricane Katrina, you know, the program, we lost the program. And so my dad brought me to school with him. He's a music teacher. And then I had to play. Uh, he was like, you could play either piano, trumpet, or both. So uh -huh. I played both. And then, um, so, <laughs> <laughs> and then he, they kind of put us on tour. We would do all the churches. I played keyboard in the church. And then suddenly my sisters had to play the flute. And we would go on tour in, all, in the South singing, You Are Holy. <laughs> <laughs> It was brutal. <laughs> it was not fun. <laughs> so you do sing? I like to sing, but y'all sing around here, so oh. I'm not acting like I'm like, I'm not singing. I like to sing. Because you know I will put you on program right here at the Happy Place. <laughs> I think we all know that by now. Oh, like, Lord Jesus. I ain't going to do you like okay, that. Okay, thank you. He, like, he said, oh, Lord Jesus, I ain't going to oh, do you Lord. like that. <laughs> and by Ola Davis, she inspired you? Yes. How so? So one of my first gigs in New Orleans, there was like a, you know, Hollywood Salt was happening in, in, the, in New Orleans, and uh, um, I did this movie called Ender's Game, and she was in it, and I was a stand-in at the time, and then I was a photo double, so I was getting closer and closer to the actors. <laughs> um, and then I saw her, and she was just like, you're such a handsome little boy. And I was like, thank you so much. And I was like, okay, well, since we're talking, um, <laughs> um, what would you suggest for me if I wanted to take acting seriously? And she said, take a class. So I enrolled in the class, and that's when I kind of started really understanding what acting really was. Wow. Yeah. She is powerful, and we'll, she definitely inspires me, so I understand that. Now, this new movie, this looks like a serious character you're playing. Yeah. Chevalier. Yes, right? Yeah, right? Tell us about your character you play. So I play a guy named Joseph Bologna, who was um, the son of a slave owner and um, a slave. Um, and he basically was this incredible violinist, a talent, at four years old. Mm. And his dad recognizes it, brings him to Paris, puts him into this incredible... Um, kind of finishing school or academy, and he becomes the best fencer in Paris, beats out the other guy that was, his name was like Picard, and um, garners the attention of Marie Antoinette and the king, and they knighted him and, and called him the Chevalier. Um, so he was also a composer and everything, and uh, yeah, so that's me, I'm the Chevalier. Oh, hi. <laughs> what? What all did it take for you to get prepared for a role like this? Oh my gosh, so. <laughs> I was shooting Elvis at the time. I was in Australia, and um, I was looking at Austin Butler do Elvis, and I was like, all right, well, here's my shot. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so I just knew that I, a lot of work ethic had to kind of get put in, so I immediately got a violin teacher. I started playing violin again, and then I went home to my dad, who also used to teach classical music, and um, we used to go into the back house. He was like, are you ready? I was like, I think I'm ready. He was like, all right, seven days a week, six hours a day um, for five months. We were practicing that violin, and... Uh, because, you know, you gotta, if you're playing a virtuoso of, yes. of the violin, then you better, you better get it right. You got to get it right. Get it in the body. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So that exciting. is a lot of commitment from an actor. So I'm completely blown away the depth you went to to create this role. And why was it important for you to want to play a role like this? Um, you know, I think it was just seeing my, my parents, you know, mm -hmm. seeing how much music had influenced them. You know, my dad used to talk about being, in, being one of the only black men playing at that time. Um, in the Philharmonic symphonies and, um, and just feeling so isolated. And I think Joseph was the, was the origin story for a lot of individuals. Like, this is a true story, by the way. Like, Joseph Bologna was a real dude in Paris. Mm. And he was an icon. He's like, you know, he rivaled Mozart. Um, I, to be honest, he was better than Mozart. But, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was about to say we ain't got to talk about it, but we're talking about it. <laughs> talk um, about it. <laughs> So he was incredible, and I wanted to honor my father. I wanted to honor Joseph's legacy, and um, I wanted to just remind people that classical music, they're the real rock stars, you know? That is true. That is true. Thank you.
for that. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch full episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.